I'm gonna show you guys four super simple, satisfying, and very sexy, snacky recipes that you are going to love. They require hardly any ingredients at all, very little time is required, and basically, you don't need to have any skills in the kitchen. Okay, we're doing taquitos today, people, and taquitos really have just got it all. They've got the crispy, crunchy factor, they've got the ooey gooey, melty, cheesy, savory awesomeness, and sometimes that's just all you want in life, is just something crispy, crunchy with a little bit of gooey factor. So you gotta make taquitos if you have corn tortillas and some vegan cheese. That is literally the bare minimum that you need to make an amazing, satisfying taquito, but if you wanna even elevate it just a little bit, you could add some beans, you could add some green onions, you could add some pickled jalapenos, you could add literally anything else you can think of to a taquito, but it'll take the same amount of time and the same amount of effort, which is basically none. So let's get right into these super simple taquitos. Okay, this is totally a non-recipe recipe. It's so simple. All you do is you take some vegan cheese shreds, add as many as you like to a few corn tortillas, pop that plate in the microwave for about 20 seconds, seconds to help the cheese get just a little bit melty. It doesn't have to be fully melted, just soft enough to help the taquitos roll up easier after we add the rest of the ingredients. Next, you can take some canned beans. I'm using Romano beans, but pinto beans or black beans, any kind of nice soft bean you wanna use, add as many as you like, but not too many or else your taquito will not roll up properly. Then if you want a little bit of spice, you can add some canned or pickled jalapenos, perfect for like nachos, but also perfect for taquitos. And then you can add some green onion if you like, or you can add red onion. Basically the toppings are up to you. I'm just showing you how I like to make my taquitos. Then just roll up the taquitos with the seam side down and then place them seam side down in an air fryer basket and you're going to air fry them for four minutes at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. They're quickies, they do not take very much time to heat up and melt. And oh my gosh, seriously, they are perfectly crispy. The cheese is melted, the other ingredients inside are nice and warm and they're just like the perfect crunchy ooey gooey snack, perfect for dipping in some salsa or vegan sour cream. What I love about these the most is that they take 10 minutes or less to whip up and you could feed a whole bunch of people some really easy lazy taquitos that everyone will love. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just get the most random craving for a piece of toast. There's just something so wholesome and so good and so nostalgic about a piece of toast. Now, don't get me wrong, like just a piece of buttered toast sometimes is all you need, but what would make it even just a little bit more like holy crap, is making it into garlic bread toast. And it is so easy. And all you need are four simple ingredients that you already have in your fridge. So allow me to show you how to elevate your plain old piece of toast into something a little bit more extraordinary. Miso, tahini, garlic butter, it's literally all in the name, baby. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna mince up or microplane two cloves of garlic and you're gonna mix it into four tablespoons of vegan butter or margarine. You're gonna add three tablespoons of tahini and one tablespoon of of miso paste. That's it, that's literally it. It's so simple. You can take a fork or a little whisk, mash it all together until you have this nice creamy, buttery paste kind of situation going on. And then just transfer it to a jar so that you can keep it in your fridge and enjoy it for many, many, many garlic toasts to come. Not only is this perfect on you know a piece of toasted bread like so, but you can add this to pizza crust. You can mix it into other sauces. You really can just elevate so many dishes with this miso tahini garlic butter. But really the way I originally fell in love with this stuff is just on a couple pieces of toasted white bread and mm, 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 seriously so so good it's savory it's tangy it's flavorful it is umami and oh my gosh you're gonna love it okay this next one is for all you sweet tubes out there like myself we're gonna be making sesame snap cookies lucky for you this cookie recipe only requires four simple ingredients and hardly any time or skill and they taste just like sesame snaps it's freaky. So let's get into it. You seriously will not believe how simple these cookies are to make and the magic that can be created with just these four ingredients. Okay, so we're gonna add half a cup of tahini to a small bowl, followed by your granulated sweetener. I'm using a blend of monk fruit erythritol sweetener with coconut sugar. And then you're gonna add two tablespoons of ground chia seeds. You can grind these at home just using a Vitamix or a bullet blender and give that all a good mixy mixy. Now, I know it's not the most visually 
pleasing cookie dough you've ever seen. It's kind of gray and gritty upon first glance, but I promise you it's not gonna be like that forever. So make sure it's all really well combined until it looks kind of like a sugary paste. Then just plop six portions onto a lined cookie sheet. Give them a little pat down with either dampened fingers or a spatula, just so that they're a little bit more flattened out and in cookie shapes, and so they bake a little bit more evenly. And then for my favorite part, we're gonna add some chopped nuts. Now I'm using cashews, but you can use really any nut or seed you like. Peanuts would be great, sesame seeds would be amazing. Really, anything will do. Chop them up, press them down so that they stick to the cookie better, and then you're gonna bake those for 12 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And let me tell you, they're gonna come out looking so much better than when they went in. They're gonna be golden brown, they're gonna be crisp around the edges, they're gonna smell so, so good. The smell alone is unbelievable. They almost smell like peanut butter cookies, but there's no peanuts here, guys. It's just sesame. Sesame goodness. Oh my goodness, the texture, especially after they've cooled down for about five to 10 minutes, they're crisp, they're crunchy, they're flavorful, they're buttery, they're toasty, roasty, they're just so good. Like, look at that snap. They really snap like sesame snaps, but they're not hard. They're just perfectly crisp and crumbly and so buttery delicious. I can't wait for you guys to try these. You're killing me softly with this salt. Okay, jokes aside, we're making kale chips, you guys. And before you sign off, I know, I know, kale chips are very 10 years ago. But kale chips are amazing, okay? They're delicious, they're crispy, they're salty, they take no skill at all, and you only need, really, just kale, salt, and oil. Everything else is gravy. Spices, actually. You'd use spices. You would not put gravy on kale chips. Unless you want to. That's fine. I don't judge. But seriously, give kale a chance and make some darn kale chips, okay? Okay, people. Kale chips are literally the most simple thing you'll ever make in your entire life. So you're gonna rip up some kale into a bowl. It could be old kale. It could be new kale. Really any kind of kale. Add it to your bowl and you're gonna toss it up with some oil. You can use any oil that you like. I'm using avocado oil. And then just give it all a good massage with your hands. I like to coat the kale with the oil first before I add spices. And then just toss in your spices. I'm using garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika, and salt. If you don't want spices and you just want salt, that's a-okay -okay too. You can really just add whatever spices and seasonings that you like. Then just give that another little toss. Then put your pieces of kale in a single layer on your air fryer basket. You might have to do this in a few batches if you have a small air fryer, but if you have an air fryer toaster oven like I do, you can probably do bigger batches like mine. Then put them into your air fryer cold before you turn on the air fryer. Then air fry them for about 10 minutes at 300 degrees, and then just leave them in your air fryer for about half an hour or so after they've finished air frying. This this will actually render the crispiest kale chip ever. You could you could leave it in for even longer if you want to do like an hour, if you want to go out, if you want to come back home to a crispy chip, this is the way to do it. They're so simple and they honestly are so hard to mess up. Plus, it's a great little way to add more greens into your diet if you just find that you don't like to eat kale on its own or raw or in salads. Seriously, kale chips. Well, I hope this video has helped to empower and equip you to satisfy all of your snacky cravings when they inevitably will hit. If you enjoyed this video, show me some love, give me a thumbs up, subscribe below, and that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.